boom all right y'all here we go another one we're gonna be doing this for like 15 20 minutes be in and out get the lesson for the day today we're talking about the rover the rover anyone want to tell me what the rover is real quick in the chat anyone understand what the rover is it's not just a dog it is not just the name of a, a furry friend rover what is the rover more over rover and let jimmy take over nice yeah that rhymed yep oh that yeah we'll go with that one mars rover okay anyone does anyone actually know this wow the rover have i heard this term before in chess i heard bishop wow i am actually slightly surprised here a knight bro i ain't know what they don't know they don't know what we about to tell them right now oh snap they don't know we, i mean we was gonna save this until later i guess we're gonna put this in right now well this is the brain board here first off you can go to brainfuel.com use canty 15 for the brain fuel 15 percent off now look here the rover is the rook up and over let's do that one more time the rover Bruh. is the rook up and and over everybody say it together the rover is the rook up and over yes very good clap it up yes oh my goodness oh my goodness the rover is the rook up and over this means to first rook lift and then move the rook over rook lift move the rook over they combine it called a rover this will help activate a rook for help of attack or defense that's what the rover is so hopefully i understand now what the rover is so you can use this always and forever ever. all right here we go so look we got tal my grandfather tal shout out to him one time two time okay so here we go uh this was uh he's playing borislav ibkov you know his name like that you know that this man is a gm Bruh. with a name like that the man's a gm so let's see what we got any rook lift and move or a specific one um yeah rover like rook up and over so it could be really any rook lift that you move and moving over all right okay all right so here we go uh amen you first amen h4 okay so uh here we go e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 a6 we got a roy we're gonna fly through moves in the opening because it's the opening a lot of times this stuff should be simple and you should develop your pieces get your team out these are basic principles and fundamentals to follow a6 bishop a4 knight f6 this is classical very classic still played today is roy lopez or the spanish another way to put it knight f6 castles and bishop e7 and ricky one right i used to play this actually i remember learning this b5 right bishop b3 or b5 b5 bishop b3 you go c3 you go d4 h3 at the right moment especially when the bishop's on e7 they try to decide if they want to put the bishop on b or g4 sometimes you go knight b8 to d7 with the briar variation and then a lot of times the shigoran variation with knight a5 and c5 comes crazy you have to play d4 right the knight goes to d2 you play a4 a lot of times to activate the bishop or magnus the way you could like to play d3 it's ridiculous right it really is a lot of theory just like most openings actually are b5 bishop b3 castle c3 d6 they do all the same stuff in every single roy lopez almost lots of study there's also uh what's the what's the other way to put it the spanish torture is another way that they talk about the roy lopez here but after this d6 move here white goes h3 prophylactic move bishop g4 is super annoying so he doesn't allow it he doesn't allow it the spanish has the rover right now actually in the roy lopez here you will see some spanish some rovers rook up and overs but not all the time this is not an opening where you know usually they call it the spanish torture for a reason right if you ever hear that you ever heard that in roy lopez they talking about what well, you got to move around and it take 150 moves and finally i get a little half point advantage and i'm doing my thing and i'm good right now of course not 150 moves but definitely a 50 piece in there you can go a nice 50 piece and roy lopez many times slow positional so it just takes a while to do stuff so rovers aren't really something that really actually happen as much it takes a long time for stuff to happen h3 knight a5 bishop c2 c5 d4 queen c7 this is 11 moves in 
I'm still following theory that can be played today, has been played. Right, I remember playing this from the black side too. If I flip the board here, I played this as black too. Play this as black too. And I really didn't like it because I got cramped. Like I didn't know what to do. Should I go before? Do I go here? You know, do I bring it? I remember playing like G6 one time. I remember <laughs> somehow I got this knight all the way to G7. Bruh. Out here looking crazy. Cause like I didn't know what to do. But this is this is theory, you know. It's theory. And it's a cramped position. It's very cramped. Queen c7, knight b to d2, bishop d7. So he develops, getting the pieces off the back rank. Connecting the rooks really didn't threaten or do anything. Just get the pieces off the back rank, right? Something you should always start understanding in every game we look at and analyze. It's always the same. Knight f1, right? Maneuvering. Why? Because the bishop was blocking the knight. Put it over here. Maybe even some g4 action. Rook f to e8. And then he hit him with 93. A little bit different. Get out the way. Have a nice day. Right. 93. Hitting f5. He's doing whatever. G6. This is still so slow. And then finally we get something here. B4. We get this nice little break. Little break. B4. Takes. Takes. Knight go to c4. Nice square. Actually, let's look at this from Black's point of view too. Nice square. Knight goes to c4. You can capture it. On takes, right? You got the open C file. Not too bad. If I'm playing black here, I'm not too mad about this position. Flip the board again. Okay, so takes, takes. He takes with the pawn. And then we have a rookie three. Which is the first part of the rover, right? The rover is what again? The rook up and over. So he plays rookie three. You can play all these other moves, bishop g5, bishop h6, bishop e3, bishop b2, bishop a3, maybe an a4 in there, guys. But this rook e3 here is a very, very, very nice move. Bruh. Tell me in the chat, what is rook e3 about? This looks strange. Doesn't this look like, what, is, what, is, what am I actually about to do with this rook? What do you think? What am I going to do with this rook? It looks like it just blocks the bishop. Looks like it just blocks the bishop. What do you think? Block block A the uh, block A the pawn rook C three. Okay. And what are we looking at? So I see rook C three block A the pawn. What else would you do with this rook here? Now, of course, Grandfather Tal here always has things in mind. Put the rook on c3. That's correct. C3 with the emote. <laughs> Waffles using the emotes. That's amazing. Rook c3, right? Rook g2. Okay. All right, Serenity. This going to be for you. Hold on. Here you go. You ready? Garbage. Say rook to g2. Okay. Here go, here, here go the g right here. Okay. There it go. Oh, rook g3. Oh, right here. Okay. That could be, it could be a possibility. We have rook to c3 as well. Not a rook g2. But what's happening here, guys, is that all of you are correct. <laughs> You're not garbage. Great job. In fact, this rover here, which is very strange, looks like a mouse slip or something, right? Over the board mouse slip. This rook can go to g3. It can go to c3. It could go to a3. So after bishop f8, with the idea of playing bishop to h6, I meant g3. I know you meant g3. Move knight, reserve on g3. Correct. You can go to g3 maybe at the right moment. Second day in the chat. Second day in a row, the chat is not garbage. Bro, you're right. Whoa. Y'all, y'all are grow. I mean, kind of want to cry, you know. But y'all are y'all grow up so fast, you know. I I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't. I don't know what to do anymore. Y'all just it hurts. It really does deep down. But I know some of y'all out there are one hundred percent steel. Garbage. Steel. Garbage. Yep. I always got it ready for you. So, bishop f8, bishop h6 is coming. He's going to hit the rook. So, what he says is, go ahead, do your thing. Bishop to b2, I'm going to activate it. I'm going to activate it. I, you also see three is not a move. All right? 
And we do well when Tao's on the game board. Well, I mean, you know, the grandfather Tao coming, you know, you can see it through his grandson, obviously, uh, make him proud. Okay, so uh, bishop b2 and bishop to h6 hitting the rook. And now after the rook is hit, we have rook c3 or rook to a3. He went rook a3. But again, right, this is a small concept here that can be used forever, right? This is very boring chess. A lot of times in the Roy Lopez, I mean, it can be. It can be. It can be. It can be. I've played this a very long time with white here, but I do know it just takes a very long time to get play. And you have to be correct and you have to be precise and you got to just maneuver, 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 do stuff. And then finally you get something that takes a long time, but it also takes precision. And you need to know what you're doing and the why's behind it here. So it takes a lot. But here is Ricky three is a very interesting idea because out of all the moves here, let's actually turn the engine on right here. You know. The engine actually gives rook b1, bishop d2, a4. If you let it sit long enough, it does say rook e3, and then it brings rook e3 up. But it keeps ciphering it down. It says it's good, maybe not. This is better. And it moves it around. But the, to play this is actually extremely cool because this is the rook up and over. Rook e3, the rover. Sometimes you can go this way. g4, rook g3, very aggressive. Rook c3, rook a3, even a4, rook a3, right? Stopping this too as well. Very, very strong. Also unorthodox. Throwing your opponent off. So pretty good. Bishop f8, bishop b2, bishop a6, rook a3. Gets out the way. Queen to b7, hitting b4. Hitting a b4 here. Now you know this is Tau, right? Y'all know this is Tau. Your pawn's hanging. What you gonna do about it? What you gonna do about it? You guys have to remember that you're Tau here, right? I have to remind you this. Before you think about the move you're about to make, rethink it, and then find another one. What's the move? Okay, sack the pawn. Okay. Sack the pawn, sack the pawn. D takes e4, okay. Who cares about the hanging pawn after your towel? Right, absolutely. But you should you should always think this way, right? This is what Grandfather Tao said, right? You, you should always think this way, right? So you never have to just, you know, choose... Pick and choose when you want to do it. But here, in fact, you guys are correct. Just ignore that it is hanging. Right? Oops, sorry. Let me go uh, D takes E5. Boom. There you go. Hit your knight. Go ahead, right? He takes on B4. Says, go ahead, bro. You take, I take. I'm cool. I'm cool here. I'm good. I'm good. So what you going to do? So what you going to do, bro? Why to move? Your bishop's hanging. Are you going to take the knight? Remember, you are playing. You are Dahlia, right? Got to remember, I am that guy. I am Tao. What you going to do? White to move. Knight hanging. Bishop hanging. You can defend it. You can move it. I see Rick B1. Oh, Rick B1. Interesting. Take the knife from board butcher. E6. So many rook left games. Absolutely. I love rook lifts myself. Queen takes D6. Queen takes. We got this. I see this as a possibility. And also E6. Interesting. Now, actually, who said uh, rook B1? And uh, ethical and cuddly said rook B1. Rook B1 is actually a cool move. It actually does work. Rook B1 is a moves. Um, the other moves are actually Garbage. do not work 100%, 1000% Garbage. every day. So queen takes D6, it doesn't work because queen takes B2. Oh, okay, cool. You're going to take the law. What was you going to take this, right? You know, like everything's hanging. I can't take this one, but I can take this one. Oh my goodness. Everything just failed. Wow. What happened to him? Right, so here, you know, you, you, you don't have any any choices but rook b1 or something like this. Queen d4. Oh, snap. Oh, snap, boy. Whoa. Uh, whoa. First off, you got a rook on a3. This looks like some type of bug house position, right? Rook a3. Why is the rook here? Oh, because of the rover, right? Who does this? Tal, oh, makes sense. Why the position look like this? There's a rook on a3. Swing that boy this way. Something like this, right? 
you still have this. You don't know when the knight's going to move and this rook's going to come into play. It's the power of the rover. Rook up and over, right? Right? Absolutely, right? So, okay, after this, queen to d4, knight to h5, right? After the knight h5 move, it's on you, chat. What do you do? Can you finish this? Do you know what to do? Can you do this? Can you do this? Thanks for the follow-up question in why. Rick B3. Wow, that's interesting, Baki. Rick B3. Rick B3. E6. Okay. A little E6 action in there. He said Rick B3. That boy said Rick B3. Look at Baki out here. Big dog move. That boy said Rook B3. A6, never mind, he plays the Bishop G7. It's good. It's get wild in there, Christo. It definitely gets wild in there. In fact, in fact, check this out. Rook A4, somebody said Rook A4. Rook A4. Interesting. Very interesting. He said, be kind. Yeah, we're going to be kind. No, we are kind. Rick A4 doesn't work because the bishop takes A4. So, you know, we're going to give him a light garbage. Light. Garbage. Very light. Bishop takes A4. Very light. But Rook B3, though. Rook B3. Uh, Queen C5. I mean, you know, very light. Very light. Garbage. Very light. So, Rook B3. Doesn't really work. E6 actually is the number one move from the engine. E6 didn't happen. Didn't happen. He took the extra material. He takes d6. He takes these. He just took the extra material. Makes sense. Bishop g7, right? You get hit here. You are forced basically to play one move here. And what is that move, chat? Let's get in the chat. Let's get in the chat. Make sure you're paying attention here. You have one move. You are forced to make it. You are forced to make it or you lose. What is that move? Baki says e5. Aqua says e5. Uh, H8 may e5 knight. It is the e5 move, correct? You have to block this, you have to play e5. Boom, block it, block this because everything's hanging. So, bishop c6, okay, cool, bishop c6. And now it's it's a little, it, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Think about this, right? It's not over. Why is it not over? I mean, because it's not made, you can't really take anything. And this is where a lot of us mess up. Like, what do we do here? What do we do? Now, one of the best things to ask that I'm, I'm giving you a Jedi tip here, a real one, right? A real Jedi tip is a lot of times you want to be asking yourself, what is my worst place piece? And then figure out how to make it better. And a lot of times in weird positions like this, where there's so many moves, you can make one that's very accurate based off of this one principle. Why to move? What do you do? Bishop D3 from Baki. Rook A1, Rook E1, okay? Knight is trapped on H5 if we go G4. Rook E3, Rook E1, Rook A1, Rook E3. Cardiac Kid got it. Very nice. Okay. It's Rook E3, right? This Rook, remember, we did the little rover, right? So the rover could do a lot. We could have went to C3. We went to A3 just to turn up a little bit, annoy him, right? You know, it, literally, if you go back here, like, watch this. Look at how... <laughs> I mean, like, like, look at this, bro. Look at this move. You know, you go Rook A3. Right? In a way, it's really like a troll move. Because, I mean, he could have went C3 too as well. He didn't want to block the bishop, obviously. But it's just funny that he just put it over here on A3. Let me just put it on A3. And when he could have went probably even gone back and be like, you know what? Maybe I don't need it there. But Rook to A3. Right. And then he realized, oh, I don't need it there no more. So move it here. Which could have been the same as Rook E1. We can keep this here. Maybe we want it on B1. Maybe for discoveries later. Bishop takes F3. Right, when you find a good move, look for a better one. Instead of capturing immediately, which could happen, he plays bishop to c3. In between move, in between tween, this is a Zhishin Zug. Queen to b5, and he takes with, right here, shockingly, guys. Shockingly, he takes with the pawn. Now, why did he take with the pawn? I mean, this is the best move. It just looks strange, right? It looks strange. 
How many of you guys would take with the rook? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're gonna take with the rook, right? If you're taking with the rook, right? I'm gonna just throw these out. You know, you, garbage. You get one. Garbage. 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 You know, everybody gets one, right? And and here's why: rook takes, bishop takes e5. Boom. Boom. Right? The rook was defending, so you kind of had to do that. You kind of had to take. So you can play f4. Rook a to d8, he plays f4. Very solid. We still got the rover on duty. Still doing his thing through here. And you know, that's crazy, right? Rook e6, bringing the rook up. White goes rook b1, queen c6. And then rook b6 hit the queen. Bishop, um, oh, sorry, uh, queen c8. Okay, yeah, he went queen c8. And then here, Tau found, bro. It's crazy how strong these players are, even back then. Um, white to move here. What do you think the move is? What What do you think? Let's just get some suggestions in the chat. What do you think the move is here? It's amazing how strong, because this is the move number two on the engine. But it's amazing how strong these players are. This is some next level explaining. Thanks. Have a nice one. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. F5 from Ethical Kid. That's amazing. Like, you know, I probably wouldn't have thought of this. I would have went with this other move that I'll be about to talk about. But I was like, man, like, maybe I probably would have thought of this. But pawn d7. I want to go d7, but I know it's not right, says Cardiac Kid. Like, I want to go d7. I want to go d7. I don't see a move. Bishop a5. Bishop a5. All right, here we go. So look. The move, actually, I, I'm thinking f5. When I was talking about the move I would do, I would play. I mean, I'm looking at this, right? Sack first thing later. I learned it from Grandfather Tao, who we're looking at right now, right? Like f5, open up. Open up the shop. f5 all day, every day. Don't think twice about it. But he played this one right here, which is bishop to d1. How many of y'all would have played this move? Bishop D1, boy, that's a move. That's ridiculous. Like, that was just like a crazy move to me. And he thought it as Bishop D1. I was like, yo, that's crazy. Thanks for the follow, Ricardo. He played Bishop D1. Move number number two on the edge. F5 was one, so, you know, like Bishop D1. Bishop H6 happens. So now he's like, oh, cool. Snap those. We snap back. And it's looking kind of weird. Kind of weird. You could just check on g3. Most of us would. It's actually move number one on the engine. I said, I'm going to play number two. F5 and stared at him real hard. Look at this move. <laughs> Bro, look at this. Look at this. Now, now the pawn's looking crazy. Bishop takes e3 is here. He's just like, yo, take the rook. Like, he always, like, you know, it's weird, right? <laughs> if you could go check and make it simple. Or you could do it absolutely the most craziest way. Tao gonna be like, oh, the, what's the crazy way? Bet. Let's do it that way. Yeah, let's do it that way. Because it looks crazier. Even if it take an extra 16 moves. F5. Hitting the rook. This rook is hanging. I mean, it's not hanging, but it is threatened. If bishop takes e3, you just take it. Rook's hanging. And if rook here, you're getting mated everywhere. Check. King here, you can try to run. But you know, it doesn't work. Check. King G8. You can play E6. Immediately threatening mate. F6 happens. First off, you got two pawns right here. You got two pawns right here, right? Okay, these two pawns in the center. Bruh. These are worth a rook. Many times. Many times. When they get this far in somebody's camp like this. I mean, and then you got the rook. I mean, this is a wrap. This is crazy. You could do anything and everything here. There's probably... I don't even need to do this. I could just take this. And there's probably no way to stop this mate. I don't think there is, actually. You get made it everywhere. Everywhere. So what old dude did in the game here, he just moved the rook back. He just moved the rook back. All right. <laughs> After, actually, I think, no, this is the ending of the game. Yeah, because I went around with the other. So, um, you know, white to move here. How do we finish this out? Yeah, F5 was nasty, right? How do you finish it out? Game ending. Yeah, the game actually ended. I'm about to say, wait, wait. This is actually me. 
the game ended actually right here. The man didn't want no more. He tapped out here and said, look, I'm out of here. Get me out of here. Oh, my goodness. Right, F5. Like, it's a wrap. He resigned. But Rook here. If Rook here happens, I was curious just to look around. What do we play when the Rook goes here? So Rook G3 or E6. Revive the H8 mate. Try to preserve the, his dignity. Facts. E6. Yes. E6. And Rook G3. Are the moves. E6 is the strongest though. Same idea. Checkmate and we great. Get the man off the board. This one was from Grandfather Town. Showing you how to use the rover. Like a classic G would. Because a classic G could. 